Now let's take a look on some of the command line options that come with Metric Beat. As we mentioned before, by default, Metric Beat tries to read the configuration file using this standard metricbeat.yaml file that comes with the default distribution. However, you can create a different file and a specify and a command line. For example, we can create a copy of our metricbeat.yaml file and create a new one for tests and purposes. To use this new file, simply execute the metric beat executable using the parameter minus C, and then specifying the file that you want to use. Using this approach, metric beat will no longer read the metric beat.yaml file and then start using the file that you have provided as a parameter. This is convenient if you want to try it out different configurations without necessarily change your files. The other option we are going to explore has to do with logging. As you can see here, by default, metric beat doesn't display anything in the console. Any output generated by metric beat is redirected to a file that is created under the logs folder. If you want to redirect all the output to the console, you have to use the option minus E. Just include the option minus E in the command line and execute along with the other parameters. By doing this, you are going to disable the default behavior of metric beat of redirecting the output to a file and then it will display all the output in the console. This is interesting for troubleshooting purposes, so you can follow up the execution of metric beat. Speaking about troubleshooting, sometimes you might want to go further and debug the execution of submodules. Submodules are the internal components of a metric beat that are responsible for certain tasks. Submodules can be identified in the log under these brackets. Index management, publisher, license, ES client lag are examples of submodules. If you want to debug some of these submodules, just execute the metric beat using the minus D parameter along with the other parameters. If you use the option minus D, you have to specify which submodule you are interested to debug. In this example, we are going to debug everything that has to do with the submodule called Publisher. So now you can see that in the log, not only we have the information that is part of the output, but now we are seeing in the debug mode everything that has to do with the publisher. If you don't know what submodule you are trying to monitor, or perhaps you are literally trying to see everything that is going on internally with the metric beat, you can use the option All Submodules. You can easily do this by providing a star in the configuration parameter. Just keep in mind that your output is going to become extremely verbose. This is ideal for troubleshooting and debugging purposes, but by all means, do not enable this option in production. There's another way to troubleshoot that doesn't have to do with the execution of metric beat itself, but how you are going to see all the events that are being generated in the output. This is important to separate the behavior of a problem that might be executing not with metric beat itself, but with the generation of the events that are being sent to the output. To use this option, you have to configure a different output in the configuration file. 
Let's do this now. I'm going to stop this execution and then we are going to open the metric beat configuration file that we've created as a copy before and enable the output that's going to flush all the information to a file. Let's then edit the file testing.yaml that we've created before. In this file, we have to do a couple changes. First, we need to remove all the configuration settings that we've configured to allow metric beat to communicate with Elastic Cloud. This is important because the Elastic Cloud configuration settings take precedence over any other outputs. In other words, if they exist in the configuration file, they will override any output that you have configured. Along with the Elastic Cloud configuration, you also need to remove any existing outputs in the metric bead configuration file. In particular, there is this output.elasticsearch that comes with the default distribution of metric bead. As we've discussed it before, only one output at a time needs to be configured in the metric bead configuration file. Now that we've removed any other output configuration and Elastic Cloud configuration, we can start enabling the output to flush the events collected and processed by metric beat to a file. In order for you to do this, just create a output.file and then you have to specify two parameters. The first is going to be where this file will be generated. You can specify a folder location. In this case, I just want to create in the same folder that metric beat will execute. Along with the path, you also need to specify what's going to be the name of the file. In my case, I'm going to call this events.log. Now that we have enable a output, let's start metric beat one more time using this changed version of the configuration file so it can now stop sending events for Elastic Cloud and, and now it will flush all those events into this file called events log, which we are going to tail to see if it's working. Before actually starting metric beat one more time, I'm going to open a new terminal here so we can follow up the filling of this file. Now that the file is in place, let's execute the testing.yaml configuration file one more time to see if the events are going to end up in the events.log file. Metric beat has been just executed and now let's start the tailing of the logs. As you can see here, the logs has been sent to this file and you can actually double check what's going to be the events that ultimately would be sent to either Elastic Cloud or any Elasticsearch you would have running on-prem. This is very handy to troubleshoot any problems that you might have with parsing the events before indexing.